Hello everybody, this is Steroid Unicorn here and welcome back to another Minecraft video and today we are going to be doing a tutorial for the spells video that I did the other day. So yeah, we're not actually going to be in Minecraft, we're going to be doing it all in function files. Um, if you don't know what a function file is, I recommend looking that up first because we're going to be working with those. Um, you're going to need five MC function files, uh, so air start, main, motion, spell CD, and start. So this will give you, I believe, all the functionality that was in the other video, which uh, if you want to see exactly what the result of this is going to be, you should go check that out first. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your main file here, which is going to basically be what starts it all off. Um, and then you're going to I use Microsoft Visual Studio, which uh, is pretty good. Um, there's a bunch of other ones you can use as well, but I'm going to use uh, this. So you're going to open up that file in whatever you can, and then uh, we're going to start. So what you're going to want to do is start with your... I'm not going to type all this out because I have it all done already, but I'm going to explain every step so that you guys can kind of mess with it a little bit yourself. You don't have to do exactly what I did. It's uh, it's uh, It'll probably be helpful for you to be able to do your own custom spells as well. So uh, you're gonna need to add your scoreboards here. So first of all, we're just adding scoreboard objectives, add click. So that's the name of the scoreboard objective and then the type of scoreboard objective that it is. So this is Minecraft used Minecraft carrot on a stick, right? So if you right click with a carrot on a stick, you get a score on this scoreboard which is how we activate our spells. So, and then you want scoreboard objectives, add spell select dummy. This isn't necessary for this particular tutorial, but it is helpful if you want multiple spells. Um, today we're only doing one spell, but if you want to do multiple spells, you can do this, and then you can set it to a different value for each spell that you want to use. And then uh, lastly, we have scoreboard objectives, add spell CD dummy. So this is going to be the countdown. Uh, to reset the click score, right? So when you right click with the carrot on the stick, it's going to add one and then the spell CD is going to count down and once it reaches its uh, countdown finish, it's going to reset the click score. So that's basically your spell cooldown. The next thing you want to do is still in your main file here, you want to type in these commands. Basically what we're going to be doing is detecting whether the player has a few parameters and if it does it's going to be running the start. So that's start the uh, the spell cast basically. So uh, first thing we're checking for is a click score of 1. So if they have a click score of 1 then this will run uh, which is right clicking with the uh, carrot on the stick. Next it's spell select of 0. So Airstrike is going to be zero, and if you wanted to make more spells, you could change the next one to one, for example. You would just make another main function and then have spell select being one instead of zero. Um, and that's how you would differentiate between the different spells. And then uh, you go NBT, which is, uh, there's a lot of different NBT data, but um, right now we're detecting for selected items, so what item the player is holding. Uh, tag display name staff so uh, this basically is just a fancy way of saying its name is staff so like a renamed item in an anvil or something like that would be renamed staff uh, and then underneath that is staff of air so staff will lead to one pathway and that pathway is start so the start file will run if the player is right clicking with a staff and the air start will run if a player is right clicking with a staff of air. This next part is basically just checking for whether a player has a specific item in its inventory, in their inventory. Uh, so inventory, checking if there is a light gray die and if there is an orange die. So if they have both those items, then this will run. So basically all we're doing in this entire line right here is just setting out parameters to whether this can run. So a player has to have these two runes, which are the dies, basically. I just retextured them. And uh, in the one underneath it, because it's a staff of air, it's going to make it so the player doesn't have to use a light gray die, right? So you don't include that as a parameter for the staff of air. So if they only have an orange die and they're using a staff of air, they can cast air start. And that's actually all we want to do with this file. So then you just want to hit 
control S to save it and then close it. So the next thing you want to do is open up your start file. It's one of the first five files that I showed in the beginning of the video. And then uh, I'm just going to copy this in here and we're going to go through it line by line. So first thing you're going to want to do, so when it runs the start command, or start file rather, it's going to run clear from at s, so at s is the player that is running it, so the person that cast the spell. So clear from the person that cast the spell, Minecraft orange die one, and then clear light die, uh, light gray die one. So basically it's gonna clear the two requirements for the spell. So first it checks in the previous main function, it checked for whether the player had these items in their inventory, and then if they, if they do, then it removes them from their inventory, basically. Now, the next part is a little bit more complicated. So it's execute as at s, so as the player that is casting the spell, run summon area of effect cloud, uh, one block up, so that would be around at their eyes. And uh, this stuff right here isn't necessary. The particle isn't necessary. I just have that in just because. Um, no gravity 1b so you don't want it to fall and uh, duration 20 so it's gonna die the area of effect cloud will expire and then kill itself after 20 ticks so one second so that's uh basically that is after you've cast the spell it it'll kill the area of effect cloud uh and then it has a custom name called bullet so we're going to be using bullet as the name of the area of effect cloud and then after you do that you're going to want to teleport the bullet so teleport at e name equals bullet in a distance of two or of less than two rather to the player to make sure that the bullet is in the right place so it doesn't spawn somewhere else right and then because the bullet is one block down from your face because things when they get teleported to you it will teleport to your feet automatically you want to teleport bullet in a distance of less than two up 1.5 blocks so that'll be about at your eyes so this will basically set up the spell for being cast so now it's at your eyes it's ready to be fired out and then i have play sound minecraft fire charge uh use player at s so it's playing the sound of a fire charge being used at the player so that it sounds like you're casting a spell basically and then to end it off you have scoreboard players remove at e name equals bullet click one so that'll basically remove the area of effect cloud from the scoreboard once it's used so that you don't accumulate infinite scoreboard uh, players, basically, because it, it creates a new player every time you cast a spell. And that's it for that. So you're going to want to save that and close it. And then you're going to want to open up the file called spell CD once again in the file that we started with. So scoreboard player set at A with a click score of 1, set click score to 2. So basically, if they right-click with a carrot on a stick, it will, after one tick, set their click score to 2. So this is so that you don't cast multiple spells from one right-click. So it immediately sets it to 2, so it only casts 1. So then you want to execute as at A with a click score of 2 or more. You want to run scoreboard players add at S spell cd1 so this will basically this whole command right here will just add one to the click score or to the spell cd score forever basically and then in our next command we have execute as at a scores uh, spell cd 13 or more so once this has added enough to reach 13 or more it runs scoreboard player set click score to zero so it'll set the click score to zero and then Right after that, we execute spell CD 13 or more, run scoreboard player set spell CD 0. So basically, this is just a full cycle. You It sets the click score to 2. Once the click score is 2, it adds to the spell CD. And once the spell CD is at 13, it sets the click score to 0, and then it sets the spell CD to 0. So this is a really quick one. It's the air start, which is basically the exact same as the start. Right here, you'll see you can pretty much copy from the start and put it in here. All you have to do is remove clear at s minecraft light gray die and then all you'll be left with is the orange die so that it only removes that 
And then finally, we want to move over to our motion file, which is one of the more complicated ones. It's not just having to do with scoreboards and everything like that. It has to do with actually moving the area of effect cloud for you. So we'll paste this in. So this first one is going to make sure that the bullet isn't going to be able to go through blocks because you probably don't want that. You can take this out if you want it to be able to go through blocks, but uh, if you don't, then you put this in. So execute if block tilde 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 Minecraft air positioned one bl one block in front of the uh, area of effect cloud. So these carrots mean one block in front of if you put the one here and then you want to run TP name uh, at E name equals bullet, which is the name of our area of effect cloud to carrot 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 1.2. And this 1.2 is actually the speed of your spell. So if you put this down to 0 0.5, it's going to make your spell go slower. Or if you put it up to 2, for example, it's, it'll make it go faster. And the reason that this works is because it's checking if block tilde tilde tilde, which t these tildes mean that it is exactly on top of the area of effect cloud. So if the area of effect cloud is in an air block, it will teleport one block forwards. If it is not in an air block, it will not. And then we've got execute as at e name equals bullet at at s run tp at s caret 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 1.2. So I'm not actually sure if I have to have this in. I did try taking it out and it didn't seem to work. Um, so these two basically do the same thing. Um, if you can find a way to get this to work without having this in, let me know. Um, because I think in theory, this right here should do the same thing as this just with one extra parameter where the block has to be air, but I'm not sure. And next we're going to put in a particle effect. So you're able to actually see the area of effect cloud because up until now, the area of effect cloud is completely invisible. You wouldn't be able to see anything and you would be casting a ray out in front of you and not be able to see it. And that's no fun. So what you want to do is execute as at E name equals bullet at, at S run particle Minecraft cloud. And then you have all your parameters for what you want the particle effect to do, how big you want it to be, etc. And uh, normal, yeah. So all these right here are just the parameters. And then you want to execute as at E, name equals bullet, at unless block, til or tilde, 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 air, run, kill at S. So if it hits a wall, basically it will be killed immediately. Because if you didn't have this in, it would basically stop teleporting at the block and then would just sit there and would never get killed. And then you have kill at E name equals bullet scores equals click score of negative 15 or less. So this basically is how long the area of effect cloud can actually stay around. So if you shoot the area of effect cloud, it can only go until its score is negative 15 and then it will get deleted. And finally, we have execute as at E name equals bullet at at S run effect give at E type equals zombie pigman distance equals less than 1.5. Give the effect Minecraft instant health uh, and then it has some parameters of how much instant health it will give. So this I just added so that you can see how much damage it will actually deal and what it will deal damage to. So this will deal damage to zombie pigmen or it would deal, if you change this to type equals zombie, for example, it would deal damage to zombies or whatever. Um, but one thing to note is if you wanted to deal damage to something that isn't undead, like you wanted to put in cow, it wouldn't actually deal damage to the cow, it would heal it. So if you wanted to do it to cow, you would have to do instant damage, right? To basically just swap that instant health out for instant damage. Um, but I'm going to leave it for zombie pigment for now. And that is it. So let's go and test it out. So guys, we are in a fresh world here. I just loaded it up. I put the data pack we just created in. And uh, what you're going to want to do to set this up is have three repeating command blocks set on always active. The first one is going to have function airstrike main in it. The second one is going to have function airstrike spell cd and the third is going to have a uh, function airstrike motion in it so as long as those are all running um you're going to want to set your scoreboard so just type this into either your uh chat or put it in a command block like i am and uh 
hit uh, spell select zero um, because the problem is that you're not actually on the scoreboard at all so you don't have a score of zero you just have a no score at all uh, so you want to make sure that your spell select score is actually zero otherwise it won't register you as wanting to cast that specific spell uh, so basically just hit that once you do that and uh, then you should be able to have your two staffs right here so you can go on a website called mc stacker there'll be a li link in the description if you want to know how to uh, get the custom names on things really easily with commands um, but yeah so you can basically now just right click and you will see that your spells will work and it uses one of each of the two uh, dies in, in the bottom there and if you use the staff of air will also cast but it will only use the orange die so guys it makes the sound it does all that let's spawn some zombie pigmen to make sure that all the damage is working I should be get some of these annoying guys let's go game mode survival Let's punch one of them. They'll all come after us. Looks like it's working. The damage is working. And we get the Monster Hunter achievement from it. So it's actually registering that we're killing them. Which I'm not sure why. I think it might be because... Yeah, I think, I think it's because I punched it first and then it died of natural causes because... It shouldn't actually register you as the person who hit it with this. Um, so if I put down just a normal pigment like that. See, he won't attack me. There is ways around that. Um, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. I did do it for the server though. So if you cast it at this guy, he will attack you because of it. But uh, yeah. So guys, I hope this was a very interesting and useful video for you guys. Um, I'm going to be coming out with a couple other uh, things in the future. Uh, for the RuneScape world and a lot of other command stuff. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. See ya.